Morning, hello. It, it's an important um, issue right now, particularly bearing in, in mind what's happened in the last few days. Um, wh why now are we having this review and how important is it that we can actually decide whether we do need a law specifically about this? Well, it's a very important issue, and the review is designed to take into account both the concern about pedestrians and the remedy in law that's been raised in the recent trial, or the lack of a remedy in law, and also, uh, but also to look at wider issues, including why so many cyclists are being killed or injured, uh, as well as the damage on pedestrians. So we've got two phases. One is focusing on the specific in principle issue of law, uh, and that'll run until the early new year, and then after that a wider consultation involving all of these cyclist groups and other organisations to try to focus on the wider issues of concern, which include uh, danger and death to cyclists themselves. Is part of the problem is that our roads are changing faster than we can keep up with. We've seen awful casualties for cyclists and a lot has been done to put cycle lanes in and attempt to keep them safer. But pedestrians, of course, are now coming into play and, and it's very difficult, isn't it, to navigate. And I find that sometimes pedestrians, not in the case of Kim Briggs, the, the recent poor soul who was killed by cyclists, but often pedestrians can be quite irresponsible. Is this actually far-reaching that we have crowded roads used in a very different way than they were 10 years ago? Yes, I think that's absolutely right. I mean, cycling is becoming uh, not just uh, something you do on a Sunday afternoon. It's, for many people, uh, a way of commuting into work. It's also becoming commercialized through courier companies and delivery companies. Uh, and it's important to get the balance of how people use the roads right. But if you look at other countries, and of course they've been doing it in many ways with a cycle-oriented focus uh, for many years, in some ways better than us, uh, then you can see these things are possible. And so the point of this review is to try to bring this knowledge and understanding together and see if we can work out a better balance for all of the users of the road. Uh, what about introducing uh, a mandatory cycling test of some sort, yeah. certainly in built-up areas and cities? We had Chris Baldman on the show not long ago, and he was saying he wouldn't cycle in some of the big cities because of the nature of, of, of traffic. And here in London, we have what used to be called Boris bikes, but bikes around the town that you can rent, and you see tourists driving around London without really having any understanding of how busy the roads are. What about an introduction of a cycling... I mean, we used to call it cycling proficiency. I think kids can still mm. do that. But more of a, a cycling test to make sure that the cyclists are road uh, aware of what the traffic is doing, are and, yeah, and the bikes yeah. are roadworthy. Well, um, uh, of course, these are proper concerns. Um, it would be tremendously damaging to the Boris bike scheme if every time you tried a Boris bike, you had to, as it were, have uh, as a tourist arriving in London to have passed a proficiency test. Um, yeah, but equally, uh, if somebody's so life wasn't put at risk, Jesse, if someone's life wasn't put at risk because they weren't particularly of, of competent, course. then ha of what course. sort of price can you put on that, whether it and ruins a scheme or not? Well, no, of, of, of course that's right, and that's why these things have got to be balanced. But the historic view has been that um, people learn to ride, and there are many schemes to help them to do that across the country. We have a whole bikeability scheme, which the government supports, designed to help uh, young people to learn to ride, and um, that historically has been deemed sufficient. Now, whether it is or not is something we can discuss when we get to the review next year. Why has this happened now? Why is the government looking at it now? Is it because of the recent cases? Because... These are issues that have been raised many times, haven't they? Well, I think it's, it's happened now for two reasons. I mean, one is because um, there has been a specific question which the, which the Kim Briggs case did, did raise, which is you know, why there is no remedy in law, a deep legal principle question as to why there's no remedy in law if you kill someone um, by what's being called reckless and furious um, uh, riding mm. um, in the way that would be parallel to dangerous driving or... Um, uh, bodily harm inflicted by or death inflicted by driving um, and the second uh, point is that um, we have wanted to tie a wider set of issues into that so that we can properly acknowledge the way in which cycling itself has grown over the last few years and it is true cycle lanes have protected many cyclists and uh, they've been uh, uh, very effective in supporting people and encouraging them to go on to the roads as new cyclists but there's always more that can be done and that's what we're trying to do here okay transport minister jesse norman thank you very much for joining us this morning